Greetings from the Division of Orthodontics, University of Connecticut Health Center. Hi, I am Sumit Yadav, Assistant Professor, Division of Orthodontics, University of Connecticut Health Center. Hello, I am Madhur Upadhyay, Assistant Clinical Professor, Division of Orthodontics, Department of Craniofacial Sciences, University of Connecticut. Sumit. Our study, Micro Damage of the Cortical Bone During Mini Implant Insertion with Self-Drilling and Self-Tapping Technique is a collaborative effort between the University of Connecticut and Indiana University. Our hypothesis was that mini implant insertion technique would have no influence on the micro crack accumulation and propagation in the cortical bone of maxilla and mandible. It was our intention to create evidence for clinician regarding a better insertion technique for mini implants. The materials and methods. Nine adult male hounds were selected for this study. They were 12 to 14 months old and a total of 162 mini implants were placed bilaterally on the buccal sides of the maxilla and the mandibles. The implant design was like it was a 6 millimeter in length implant with a 1.6 millimeter diameter and on the basis of insertion and site of placement mini implants were divided into four groups A. Self drilling in the mandible B. Self drilling in the maxilla C. Self tapping in the mandible and D. Self tapping in the maxilla The maxilla and mandible of the hounds were dissected into separate bone blocks containing the mini implant with about 5 mm of adjacent supporting bone. Sections were stained with basic fuchsin and were grounded using an exact grinder to attain the desired thickness of approximately 50 to 70 micrometer. Histomorphometric parameters, micro crack length and crack surface density were evaluated using bioquant image analysis. The results of our study showed on an average 200 micrometer to 300 micrometer of diffuse damage of the cortical bone adjacent to mini implant was present on the either side of the implant in both the groups. Micro damage in the form of discontinuities was observed in all the specimens both in maxilla and mandible. Our third finding showed that in both the maxilla and mandible, the crack length and the crack surface density was significantly higher for the self-drilling technique compared with self-tapping technique. Well, now interpreting the results that we got. First of all, the null hypothesis was rejected in favor of an alternate hypothesis that the self-drilling technique results in more micro damage, that is micro cracks, accumulation in the adjacent cortical bone for both the maxilla and the mandible immediately after mini implant placement. Secondly, our results showed no difference in micro damage between the maxilla and the mandible with either insertion techniques. And thirdly, micro cracks have been investigated as a parameter that simultaneously affects the mechanical and structural properties of cortical bone as well as its toughness. Recent studies in the literature have shown that linear micro cracks and diffuse damage had differential biomechanical responses and outcomes. Diffuse damage is a hallmark of bones with better fracture resistance. That is, unlike linear micro cracks, diffuse damage allows bones to kind of dissipate the energy and postpone the fracture. So our study showed that the self-drilling techniques caused greater micro damage of the surrounding bone immediately after the placement of mini implant. So the, and the take home message is does micro cracks accumulation jeopardizes the primary stability of the mini implants? Does micro cracks leads to remodeling of the bone at the same time? In the maxilla, the mini implant comes in contact both with the trabecular and the cortical bone and they have a different remodeling rate. So I'm, I'm, I would like to conclude by saying that clinicians have to be very cautious in how they interpret the results before they translate into the clinical practice.